Hi, everybody. This is Susan from the Forest Park Public Library. I have with me a very talented local author who has agreed to give us some of her time today. Her name is Corita Fly, and she is the author of the book, A Scar Tells a Story. So she, like I said, she's a local author. We're hoping you can see some more of her this fall when we do a local author book fair, but she's agreed to answer a few questions for us today. Thank you for joining us, Corita. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. So first off, have you always been interested in writing and what was your inspiration for taking this project on? Actually, no, I never liked writing. In school, I did not like writing, <laughs> never. My background is in criminal law, actually, so it has nothing to do with like writing books. But in 2017, I had my son at 26 weeks. Um, and one of the ways that I really coped with our extended NICU stay was writing, journaling, kind of documenting our journey. Um, and that kind of showed me the healing power of writing and just sharing your story and all the creative ways you can kind of get your feelings out. Um, so that's where writing became a big part of my life. I can see that being so therapeutic to parents, especially in those early stages. And especially if there's, um, it's any kind of complicated pregnancy too, where there's yes. just a lot of feelings and stress. Yes. Uh, so thank you for sharing that with us. What was the most important thing you feel like you've learned from this experience? And what advice do you have for parents who are in your situation? For me, starting having a, a baby in the NICU was completely a roller coaster. <laughs> to say it in, in the easiest way, it was a roller coaster. And so kind of writing and sharing that journey um, through social media is kind of where it started. I started posting different little things about our journey and the different diagnoses that my son had. And I found that there was such a huge community online of other parents who had children with special needs or prematurity. Um, things like that. And so that was big for me, just kind of putting myself out there, putting my story out there. And then in return, I got a whole community of people that I had no idea were out there, which was amazing. And that's what led to me wanting to write this children's book, A Scar Tells the Story, because it, it focuses on my son, um, who was born with an encephalocele, which is a rare brain defect um, that most children who have it will end up needing major brain surgery, which my son did. And it left a large scar. And so for me, it was kind of, what can I do now to start helping him to embrace his differences, embrace his physical differences, or even, you know, personality differences that people have growing up. Some people are super outgoing, some people aren't, you know, just different ways that people kind of tend to feel about themselves as they're growing up. And so a children's book popped in my head and I had released another book prior, a year or two before, just kind of documenting my journey um, for moms who were on the NICU journey. And so a children's book was not in my wheelhouse at all, but I wanted to create this because I'm like, children need to be able to embrace themselves. And other children um, who may not have physical differences can read this book and realize that, you know, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with them necessarily. You know, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's no reason to stay away from them. We're all the same, we just have a few differences. And so that's where A Scar Tells a Story comes from. And, and I hope that that's the message that everyone receives when they read that book. That's a beautiful message. And I bet it's like giving a lot of um, kind of good vibes and positivity to parents who are yeah. maybe going through a, a difficult time or just like not really not knowing how to deal with things or how to address things. I think that's really, that's really great that this book is out there. Um, when you were going through the, like the writing of the book and through mm -hmm. your, your own pregnancy process and everything, were there any resources that really helped you that you would like to recommend to other parents? Sure, as far as my NICU journey, um, March of Dimes is huge, which I'm sure everyone knows about March of Dimes. They have tons of resources and they're really good on their social media platforms about sharing different stories. And so through their social media, you can kind of find other families who have a similar story to yours that you may want to connect with. Um, and then there's other smaller organizations um, that are online that are kind of based in Chicago, like Graham's Foundation, um, things like that, Carter's Cause, that um, are families just like me, 
who have a nonprofit organization that say, hey, I know this is hard. I know this is really difficult, but here's some you know, help. Here's some support. You can talk to me. I can provide you know, other resources for you. But I think finding a local organization or like a local group is kind of the way to go when you're looking for support because you have someone that's tangible. You know, March of Dimes is huge and you can send an email and never hear back sometimes. But when you have someone that say, hey, you can take my phone number, just call me. You know, you don't have to go through the email or anything because when you're going through a difficult pregnancy or unexpected um, birth trauma, or birth defects with your child, sometimes things hit at 2 a.m. and you're like, I have no clue what I'm doing right now. Or, you know, on a Sunday when some traditional offices may be closed or, you know, the social worker is not at the hospital that day or things like that. So what do you do? Having someone local to you or like someone you, even on social media that you may connect with and just say, hey, I know you live a million miles away from me, but our kids have the same diagnosis. You know, how are you kind of navigating this? And I think it's scary putting yourself out there at first and sharing your journey, especially when with pregnancy trauma and things like that, because you feel guilty at first. And so kind of telling the whole world that, hey, this thing is going on with my child can be super scary. But then once you put yourself out there and realize it's really healing and empowering to share your story and then connect with other people who are just as strong as you and your child are. Thank you so much for that. And for those of you listening, we're going to put um, links to those websites uh, for those organizations mentioned um, in the post. So you'll be able to check some of those out if you need it. So I know um, that can, like, you know, getting your story out there can seem like a big process. Do yeah. you, can you kind of talk us through the process of bringing your book to publication? Um, sure. for people who are also interested in sharing their story and want to know how to get started. Sure. Um, a lot of us kind of overthink the writing process to start out with. And it's like, that can be the most intimidating part, just overthinking, what am I going to say? And then you have to go back to the beginning. Why do I even want to write a book? What is it that I'm trying to say? You know, why is this even an idea of mine? And for me, it was like, okay, I want my child to read this book and know that he's super strong, super brave, and I want other kids with medical, compl medical complexities to do the same. And so how can I portray that to a kid? You know, what can I do to make it fun for a kid to read? So I think the first thing is give yourself, you know, time to kind of change up the story. Just start writing. And if you get through the first half of the book and you're like, this is awful. <laughs> don't get discouraged. And, and don't give up on your writing process. You may have to start over or get help. You know, there's, you can reach out to people who um, do maybe like editing professionals and that can help you guide through that. You know, some people may not have the resources to pay for a professional editor. So just a good friend that you have, you know, hey, can you work through this writing process with me? Um, I think I'm doing okay. But then if somebody else reads it and they're like, this is kind of not saying anything that you're trying to say. <laughs> then, you know, you may have to start over, but give yourself grace with the writing process. You may have to start over tons of times. That does not mean writing isn't for you or you're not good at it or, you know, just forget the whole idea. That would be the first thing I'd say, give yourself grace with the process. Secondly, do your research on um, publishers because there's a million different publication companies out there, um, independently owned local ones, local printers that you can use. So do what's best for you. Um, I use a large kind of publishing platform and there are pros and cons to it. There's, you know, of course you don't have a person that you can call anytime you have questions. You have to go through the whole email process and wait to hear back and things like that. So in that sense, I'd recommend maybe a local publisher if you can find one will probably make your process easier. But do your research because there's some that uh, can get your book into multiple stores immediately or that can get you on multiple platforms immediately if that's what your goal is or if you just want to use a smaller publisher and then do personal sales on your own you're not worried about getting into a store right away or you know being on Amazon or Barnes and Noble right away you just want to sell personally or locally then that can be a, a cheaper route for you to take publishing is expensive <laughs> um I will say that but don't let that deter you either don't let the cost deter you that's where research comes in. And that's where finding other options that you can go with 
or you know where can I eliminate costs like a professional editor like I said that cost you can eliminate that cost by maybe if you have a good friend that's good at writing or has like a journalism degree or something um can you help me with this process if you don't mind and I'm sure they wouldn't mind at all and then illustrations was hard <laughs> to find a good illustrator that takes a lot of research as well and it depends on if you want digital imaging, you know, freehand art, things like that. So I would say if you're interested in publishing, the first thing you want to do is have an in-depth conversation with someone who has published before. I know I'm giving you guys tips here on the interview and I could go on for hours with, you know, the things that I've learned. Um, this is actually the third project that I published. So there's tons of things that I feel like I've learned and good and bad in this process. So I'm always open to if someone wants to just kind of chat, um, I'll give my information to Susan or I can link my website or anything um, for more detail, but research is huge. Don't just go with the first company that you see. Don't get discouraged if you're not you know, going the way you wanna go with your writing and don't be afraid to take criticism. Thank you so much for that, for that advice. So who were the first people you showed your book to? My sisters. <laughs> My sisters were the first that um, I showed it to. And I was kind of nervous at first because, like I said, I had never written a children's book. And I'm like, I hope this makes sense. I hope this is kid friendly. I don't know. I was just writing something. And then you get all these terrible thoughts in your head like, this is going to be horrible. But my sisters read it and both were brought to tears immediately. And I don't think it was just because they were my sister. <laughs> I think that um, the message really resonated. And I think I was able to get across exactly what I was feeling and what I wanted my child to feel and understand when reading that book. And so my sisters read it first. And once I kind of got their stamp of approval, I guess you could say, um, I knew that I had to move forward with the process and kind of get it out there. How has your son reacted to the book? Oh my goodness, he loves it. He loves it. He took it to school with him. He started preschool um, this past school year. And so to be able to share it with his classmates and have it read in the classroom, and oh my gosh, he has been, all the kids knew right away that it was Isaac on the cover because the illustrator did a phenomenal job and it looked exactly like him. <laughs> Um, so all the kids knew that it was him and it, it's been great. He has loved it. And I think um, we took it to his therapy office as well. He goes to physical therapy and occupational therapy and speech therapy. Um, again, parents, if you have kids with medical complications, you know, those things are kind of <laughs> never ending. And so for him to be able to share it with the kids at therapy who um, do have medical complexities like he does or, you know, physical differences, for him to be able to share that book with them and kind of, you know, say, hey, we both have leg braces or, you know, we both have glasses, we both have this, has been amazing to watch. So, yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. And I haven't, I haven't met your son in person, but I sort of feel like I have almost in the yeah. way. The <laughs> illustrator did such an awesome job of really yes. capturing, like, I feel like that joy and just like, yeah, yeah, you really feel like this is like a kid you could know. Um, yes. Yeah, it's really, I mean, you have to be so happy about that. I am. And the illustrator, again, it just kind of came through research. She was actually a college student. Um, she's not like this big professional illustrator or anything. She's a college student that someone gave me her information. It was like, she's super good at drawing. She could probably do this. She's never done it before, but, you know, she might be able to. <laughs> and she did. And it was phenomenal. So, again, that comes with trial and error in publishing a book. I found someone great who... I probably would have overlooked because of her age or, you know, um, the fact that she hasn't done this so much, but it came out amazing. So take the chances. <laughs> so you have multiple writers in your, in your family. Did your mm -hmm. timelines overlap at all? What effect did you all have on each other's process? <laughs> what did you say? Um, for me, my, I had already released the individual book and then a book collaboration. And then my sister was interested in writing a children's book. I had not written my children's book yet. And so I gave her what advice I could. I was like, but um, children's books are not my area of expertise. <laughs> so I can give you, you know, editing advice. I can help you through that process. But other than that, you're on your own. But no, we were really uh, 
just kind of journaling through it together. And then when I was ready to write my children's book, um, I was able to go to her for different advice and, you know, how she decided on colors and illustrations and things like that. So I think um, because we had two different areas of, of writing expertise, I guess you could say, um, we just kind of bounce ideas off each other all the time. Even I just got off the phone with her a little while ago and I was like, hey, I have an idea for when we release our next book. Neither one of us are actively writing right now, but it's just kind of like now that we've both done it and we both are authors, it's kind of just part of who we are at this point. So we're always sharing ideas or bouncing things off each other, giving advice, just kind of part of our everyday conversation at this point. Now, I know you said you don't have anything that you're actively working on right now, but do you kind of foresee any other writing projects in your future? I do. I do. I think after I released the Scar Tells the Story and I kind of saw just how many um, families could relate to it and connect with the story and just how they were able to embrace it for their own children. Um, it's just kind of opened my eyes to different uh, medical things that I've gone through with my son and finding ways to put those into children's books and kind of make it so that other kids can see themselves, even, you know, if, if they're struggling with whatever it is that they're going through. My son has had um, multiple surgeries, airway surgeries, brain surgeries, and he wears leg braces, you know, all kind of things. So there's so many areas that I feel like I want to share about his story so that other children can see themselves and not feel bad about it. So I definitely have some other children's books that I want to put out there um, for children with disabilities and medical complexities. Really look forward to seeing those. I know. Oh, thank I, you. Um, yeah, I know that's going to be wonderful. Um, thank you for putting in the work and the time. Um, we're so excited to have your book in our collection. We're going to be adding it to the collection. We just got our copy. Um, where can people buy your book if they or your books if they want to if they want to if they want to find them somewhere? Sure, they are available on Amazon. Um, that's always an option. And then I sell them on my personal website. Um, I can give that to you. I can link it. I have a website for my nonprofit as well for my writing platform. So I have two different websites where they can be found. Um, they are on Amazon if someone just wants to Google it and get it quicker. Um, but if you want to buy them, you know, multiple copies or things like that, you can contact me directly um, and we can arrange that as well. Thank you. Thank you again. This was Karita Fly, and she is the author of A Scar Tells a Story. Again, we hope to bring her back to the library in person this fall for our author book fair. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. Absolutely. Thank you, Susan.